Hi everyone, this is Dr. Heather Austin Robillard and this lecture video is titled What It Takes to Become an LCDC. What we will cover in this lecture video is the rationale for the lessons that we will have in this course, what is a licensed chemical dependency counselor, and how can you become one? Let's assume that you are taking this class for the following reasons. Because you will work with individuals who have a substance use disorder. Uh, maybe you want to take the LCDC license exam, in, specifically in Texas. Um, or this class is part of your uh, core requirement for the CARS program. Again, if you get an ADRS minor or if you're in the CARS bachelors, the, it is designed for you to be able to apply for LCDC licensure once you have completed your program, which I'll talk more about in this video. First, let's turn your attention for the rationale for what we will be learning in this class. The primary agenda for this class is to help you develop the understanding of creating a substance abuse evaluation. A substance abuse evaluation is central in the clinical work that you do with substance use disorders. You will learn how to assess and diagnose an individual with a substance use disorder and then write up a substance abuse evaluation, which is essential to the treatment and placement of an individual with a substance use disorder. The skills that you'll be learning in this class and that you will need for a substance abuse evaluation include interviewing skills, writing skills, communicating with clients, thinking and conceptualizing what stories they give to you. You may not be familiar about what a licensed chemical dependency counselor is and what they can do. So hopefully by the end of this course, you will be familiar with what an LCDC is able to do and how you can become one. A licensed chemical dependency counselor can provide a counseling services to individuals and their loved ones who struggle with some sort of substance use disorder. LCDCs cannot provide mental health treatment. However, this class you will learn about how to refer for mental health treatment if during your substance abuse evaluation an individual has a mental health issue. The purpose or scope of a licensed chemical dependency counselor is to assist individuals and groups of people with an understanding of chemical dependency problems. They will help people define their goals and plan action reflecting those goals, the client's abilities and desires, as well as their needs that are primarily affected by the substance use disorder. LCDCs can work in treatment centers, they can work for community mental health uh, places like um, StarCare or MHMR. Um, they can also hold their own private practice uh, where they meet with individuals' uh, private pay. So you may be thinking, how can I become an LCDC um, with just a bachelor's degree? Most counseling licensures take a master's degree or higher. With an LCDC, you actually need even less than that. So first, you would become an LCDC intern. Um, what are the requirements to become an LCDC intern? One, you have to take the classes that are provided for you in this ADRS minor. So if you weren't in a bachelor's degree, you would just be taking the courses that are provided here or at other places. Then you would need to prov uh, be provided supervised work or what we would call a practicum. So a practicum is where you are working under somebody who is licensed as a full LCDC and you'd be training under them by actually working with clients. This can, however, be waived if you just have a bachelor's degree. So for example, if you have finished at Texas Tech with this bachelor's degree and an ADRS minor, you are qualified to apply to be an LCDC, uh, which is why all you need is a high school diploma. In order to move to the licensed chemical dependency counselor full license, you need to have at least an associate's degree. You need to have 4,000 hours of supervised experience. So for example, you'll be an LCDCI and continuing to work with individuals with substance use disorders, but you will also have a supervisor who is giving you information about case management, how to work with those specific clients. So that way you're not just left working with people that you have no, no experience with. 
Um, then you will take a written examination, which throughout this course, I will tell you about the specific core competencies of those exams and what you're learning in this course and how it attends to that specific exam. Then you will also have to do a case presentation for the board. Uh, the 4,000 hours of supervised work can be waived if you have a master's or a PhD in certain jurisdictions. When it comes to the written board, specifically in Texas, you can find the certification board through the tcbap.org, which will be located on Blackboard for you. Um, the coverage of the exam can also be listed in the recommended readings. However, the primary coverage that we will be focused on in this class is domain one which includes screening, assessment, and engagement. The LT LCDC practice is based heavily on SAMHSA's top 21 competencies, which was located for your readings this module. Please make sure you've re read over those so you understand the competencies it takes to be an LCDC. Now, with all of that, what you will be learning in this class that will help you either learn about an LCDC, possibly figure out how to become an LCDC, and what it would take if you walked out of this class tomorrow and became an LCDC and worked with a client. So first we will learn DSM substance use diagnosis. We will talk about the different types of drugs and how you can refer for mental health uh, illnesses or diagnoses. We will also talk about diversity issues and ethics within substance use disorders. Um, ethics is gonna be a huge component of an LD LCDC because you are actually held to certain standards of ethics initial contact and rapport building with clients so that they trust you enough to give you honest answers when you're screening them and assessing them for a substance use disorder. We will also learn about problem definition and case conceptualization. You will be learning about how to screen individuals and take history as well as collect other information that will be important for a substance abuse evaluation. I will also teach you about multidimensional substance use assessments, uh, which are a part of the co uh, core competencies discussed in SAMHSA's 21. And then we will also discuss how do you interpret the testing and screening information that you are giving to clients so that you can accurately rep uh, replicate that into your substance abuse evaluation. I hope you all enjoyed this lecture video and are excited to continue the rest of this class and the other modules that are to come. Thank you and have a wonderful day.